welcome to my channel in English for Nursing Communication 2. Uh, this is a team teaching course taught by yours truly, Rafael Joyce Manalo, Ajan Nataya Ajan Lami from the Faculty of Nursing na Pagpatong Rajabat University. So I'm going to give you a brief introduction of this course. So this course is the integration of the four skills, which is the reading, the writing, um, speaking, and listening skills. And uh, this is um, applicable in all various nursing disciplines. So the objectives here, the general objective includes it aims to develop students' understanding and ability to reuse um, research articles, commentaries, and academic paper, healthcare-related issues. Second, speak and communicate therapeutically in various nursing situations that includes oral presentations and innovative simulations. Third, listen to news, lectures, and speeches via multimedia and the internet. And the last one, which is the number four, um, is a writing in various related nursing. So, the outline of this course includes therapeutic communication to patients in the medicine ward, um, in surgical and orthopedic ward, maternal and child ward, um, elderly ward, and oncology ward. The next phase would be um, nurse overview of patients during accident and emergency situations, psychiatric and mental health conditions, um, patients undergoing dialysis procedures. Uh, patients with neurologic disorders and patients uh, and nurse overview on telehealth nursing during COVID-19 pandemic. In the last phase of this um, course, uh, we would be uh, discussing the concepts of uh, writing nurses notes, care plans, handover reports, um, case study and <clears throat> the most important is the nurse research article which will be submitted at the end of the course. So I um, would like to briefly introduce myself. I am Rafael Joyce Manalo and um, I am the instructor, lecturer in this course. And uh, we are going to discuss the first topic, which is the therapeutic nursing communication with patients in the medicine ward. So we will um, only uh, touch the case of patients which is with uh, or with having a medical condition. And um, the objectives of this topic includes the following. So each student should be able to familiarize the vocabulary words related to patients with COVID, um, the mode of transmission, um, the signs and symptoms, um, samples used for testing, um, the different COVID-19 vaccinations, uh, preventing of the spread of COVID-19 infection, and uh, the last one would be practice tests in a separate question. So let's discuss this one at a time. So since I focus on COVID-19, which is timely in our um, time, in our generation, so I'm going to give you an overview about COVID-19. So COVID-19, or coronavirus disease is an infectious disease caused by SARS-CoV-2 virus. It was first discovered in Wuhan, China in the year 2019, which rapidly spread all over the world. This disease has been considered a medical emergency that prompted the WHO to declare a global pandemic for the scientists have tried their best to find cures. So the vocabulary here includes infectious, shiver, abroad, contact, contagious, fever, sore throat, rhinorrhea, diarrhea, sepsis, dro droplets, hygiene, pathogen, 
mucous membranes, um, immune system, antibody, virus, communicable diseases, epidemic, pandemic, asepsis, contaminate immunity, susceptible, transmission, inoculate, and prophylaxis. So as you can see here, these are the um, meaning of the definitions of each vocabulary. So you try to find time to um, review during your self-directed learning schedules. Alright, so let's move on to number two, okay, subtopic. So the mode of transmission, so let's find out how is it transmitted. So it would, uh, we would consider this extremely high when uh, you face someone who is coughing. Um, next, when someone talks to you directly without wearing a mask. When you sneeze or when someone sneezes in front of you. When someone spits saliva or any, any droplets coming out from the respiratory tract of our human body. So it's extremely high. What about the probable the probability of transmission? So let's consider when you touch a tissue which is being touched by someone who is infected or you who is using this tissue paper you can also transmit this infection to other people utensils like for example the spoon the fork or let's say in general the eating utensils toys okay, for kids they can probably get um, virus from toys, keyboards. So this is in the computer. When someone is uh, using the computer and then he or she is infected, he or she has uh, the tendency to transmit the infection towards you or vice versa. And this is extremely rare in animal to person, as you can see in the picture, or mother to unborn child. So this is when a mother um, tested positive, uh, both the child and the mother after delivery are separated in a separate isolation group. So the third one, so what, let's find out the signs and symptoms. So first here, we have a symptomatic or presymptomatic. So this is like um, no symptoms at all when a person is tested um, positive. When, okay, when cases like mild symptoms, okay, so um, for mild symptoms, uh, fever, cough, sore throat, body malaise, headache, muscle pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, loss of taste and smell. But who do not have shortness of breath, dyspnea, or abnormal chest imaging or x-ray. So it is considered mild symptoms. What about moderate? So um, in moderate um, conditions, um, Oxygen saturation is being checked at room air and it is considered moderate when it is uh, equals to 94% uh, oxygen saturation of the blood in room temperature. So what about severe? Okay, so when the, the signs and symptoms are becoming severe, uh, where do you think the patient is? The patient is already rushed to the hospital. So most likely, the 
um, oxygen saturation in the blood in room temperature is less than 94%. And um, the patient needs oxygen and may, uh, the patient may have or probably have uh, labor breathing or increased respiration rate or increased breathing at more than 30 breaths per minute. So that's it for the severe. But for the critical conditions, um, signs and symptoms like respiratory failure, septic shock, and or multiple organ dysfunction, the patient is uh, should be confined inside an intensive care unit for uh, respiratory support. So those are the um, COVID-19 signs and symptoms. So what, let's find out the specimen samples used. So first we have nasal discharges, which is coming from your nose, saliva, or blood. So these are the samples that should be um, taken from the patient for testing. And uh, let's find out what are the tests that are being used to determine whether a patient is positive or negative or which strain uh, infects a patient. So we have here the most common one, which is um, uh, usually um, tested at home. So we have the APK test kit. So this can be tested at the beginning when someone suspects or does not show signs of infection. And it's very fast because we can only get the results at uh, approximately 15 to 30 minutes. So it's fast and uh, convenient for everyone to do it as well. So the next one is PCR. Okay, PCR test, this is conducted at the hospital. So uh, this is a real-time reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction to test for the qualitative detection of nucleic acid from SARS of two in upper and lower respiratory specimens of a person or a patient. And another one here is from the blood, an ELISA test is being performed. So this is an enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay or ELISA which is intended for the qualitative detection of total antibodies in our body. So a blood uh, is a specimen sample for this. While the rest, ETK and PCR or RT-PCR tests are uh, nasal secretions, okay. oral or nasal secretions. All right. So let's move on to the different um, vaccination. So the most common we have um, Pfizer, BioNTech. This is an mRNA vaccine, which is developed, which was developed for um, ages five to eleven years old, school children, twelve years old and above, and uh, this can also be used for adults, so five years old until adults, um, except when there is a contraindication uh, when a patient has an underlying condition. So it's an mRNA vaccine. So the next one here we have the Moderna. Moderna is also an mRNA vaccine for 18 years old and above recipients or 18 years old and above person. So this is not um, advisable for um, younger children or below 18 years old at the moment, but the scientists are trying their best to uh, work it out so it would be useful for all ages. Then the next one here we have the Johnson & Johnson or we call it Janssen. This is a single dose um, vaccine which is a viral vector vaccine that are given that is given or administered to eight years old and above um, recipients of person. Um, then we have AstraZeneca, Oxford, AstraZeneca. This is a recombinant vaccine. 
which is given only to 18 years old and above recipients. And the next one, we have Sinovac. Um, this is also called Coronavac or Tycovac, which is an inactivated vaccine given to 18 years old and above um, recipients. The same is true with Sinovac. But Sinopharm is also called as BIPP vaccine in an inactivated vaccine, which is also um, given to each new so than about. So let's take note of those uh, different types of vaccine. And uh, actually, there's more, but the same these are trying their best to um, improve their study so vaccines will be um, effective to any variants. Of concern, which is um, affecting the um, entire um, globe where people suffer a lot. Um, the last one also we have um, Sputnik. Okay, Sputnik is an adenovirus viral vector vaccine, which is given to 18 years old and above um, recipients. So this is the one. Um, this was um, produced in uh, Russia. And Sputnik, uh, Sputnik um, the famous um, manufacturer for this is the Gamalaya. Alright. So let's find out the steps to prevent the spread of infection. So first, wash hands frequently. So this is taught even at schools. Um, malls, anywhere, any um any um, establishments, and if you cannot wash your hands because there is uh, let's say um no availability of water to use or so, you can just have to maintain a good hygiene by bringing with you alcohol gel, alcohol spray, whatever you will go, or you can have it at the place where you are going to. And of course, don't share personal items like toothbrush because it's personal. It's easy to spread infection when we share this personal items, especially those who are exposed or tested positive. So isolate. Okay. Isolate either at home or at the hospital when you are tested positive or exposed to someone who is but um, if a um, condition of a person is asymptomatic or no symptoms at all, um, they can either choose to stay at the hospital or um, stay at home for um, isolation. So always ask um, the healthcare provider or the doctor or the physician uh, which is the best thing to do when you're exposed or when you're tested positive. And um, only take antivirals when prescribed. So don't take any medications um, when you are not prescribed. Because, of course, um, when you do um, over-the-counter medications, it will also uh, give you harm, especially to your organs. And this, avoid large crowds or air-conditioned venues. So this is not possible, especially when the ventilation is not good. So it's, uh, we can easily spread or we can easily catch the infection when we occasionally do this. Or when we do not practice um, safety protocols. And of course, the last one, which is very important, get vaccinated. So vaccination can save lives because... Uh, this helps uh, decrease the severity of hospitalization and even deaths. So get vaccinated, which uh, whatever type of vaccine is available and uh, according to your healthcare provider. So as the conclusion, uh, we can say that uh, most individuals or persons infected with virus will experience mild to moderate respiratory illness and recover without requiring special treatment, especially those who are 
vaccinated. However, some will become seriously ill and require medical attention at the hospital. So they need um, life support or um, oxygen support. So it is essential to practice respiratory etiquette. For example, coughing into a flexed elbow, stay at home and self-isolate until a person until you or a person recovers if he or she feels unwell. And if it's time to get vaccinated, your healthcare provider will going to advise you to have it near uh, at the nearest um, facility. So I hope you learned something. And of course, before we will end this session, you are going to do, okay, as your task, the practice test. So where can you find a practice test? It, it is attached in the website. And you have to download the worksheets, write your answers in an answer sheet, and send them to your uh, teacher or to your instructor, to your lecturer, email address. So, thank you very much, and I hope to see you next time. If you have inquiries, you can just send me a message or reach, reach me through my email or line. So thank you and have a nice day. Bye-bye.